Revelation chapter 2. Speaking of, speaking of uh, Bewitched, in that show, you remember that show, right? Who remembers Aunt Clara? Okay, now, uh, and, and I'm going to use this as an illustration, because um, Jezebel was a woman of witchcraft, and... To illustrate the fact that I really do believe there are two religions and only two religions in this world. One of them is the worship of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and his son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, the blood atonement. In other words, salvation, Bible Christianity. And then there is witchcraft and every other religion in the world is some form of witchcraft. They wouldn't call it that, but it is some form of a performance of a ritual, a performance of uh, a religious act, the utterance or the repeated utterances of certain words in order to wake God up Believe it or not, there are statues of Buddha called the Sleeping Buddha. And they literally have Buddha laying down, sleeping. And there are, let's see, what God is it? One of the gods of India is constantly asleep and the Indians teach that we are his dream. In other words, that's how we exist. We exist in his dream state because he is perpetually asleep. Were he to wake up, it would basically eliminate or annihilate the universe. Because his dream would be gone. That's the kind of stuff people believe. Um, and that's what Elijah was mocking the prophets of Baal. Where is your God? Is he out pursuing? Is he asleep and needs to be awakened? And that's part of it. So practically every religion in the world, you can find a reference to it in your Bible. Uh, but we'll get to Aunt Claire in a minute, and I'll show you why she's important. Revelation 2.18, uh, actually let's pick it up in verse 19. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few uh, things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach, to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, to eat things sacrifice to idols. So we had gotten to the point with Jezebel where um, we were going to talk about her Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. So the religion that Jezebel led uh, the people of Israel, that which would be the 10 northern tribes that at this time Israel has divided. Judah and Benjamin to the south. And then you have the 10 tribes that lived up to the north. Their capital was Samaria. They had a temple that they had built up there, but it wasn't a temple to God. They had golden calves. It seems like they went back to the wilderness and got their gods resurrected from the wilderness and built temples and put these golden calves in, in that temple. And that was their religion. That's why, for the most part, most of the northern kings were bad. Most of them were evil. And Ahab was one of the worst of them. Uh, a few more of the southern kings of Judah and Benjamin were good kings. Uh, but for the most part, the, the Samaria Jews 
were evil and Ahab and Jezebel were Samaritan or Samarian Jews and so on. And so Jezebel and her witchcraft are so many. Nahum chapter 3 verse 4, because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that sells nations through her whoredoms, families through her witchcrafts. Let me sort of explain uh, witchcraft a little bit. And, I'm, and I used the illustration last week of praying in a certain spot or facing in a certain direction or the utterance of certain words, especially the repeated utterance of certain words. We do not have in this church and never will have a prayer book. Why? We don't read prayers. We pray them. Because God wants the, to pray in the spirit is to pray from the heart, not from the liturgy, not from the publishing company, not from the priests who wrote down what you have to say in order to get God's attention. You want to meet with God and you want God to hear your prayer. It's as simple, it's as, simple as bowing before him reverencing him Jesus gave us the model prayer our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come you are praying in accordance with God's will thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and once you pray in the in the uh, the, the manner in which Jesus taught us to pray, um, well, I just blew, my mind's still tired. Once you pray after God's will, you don't have to worry about whether or not that prayer is going to be answered or not. That prayer is going to be answered. Now, it may not be answered the exact way you prayed it. It will always be Better than the exact way you prayed it. But God will always answer that prayer. But will he do it the moment we pray it? Not always. God is a God of timing. He does everything in his time and in his way. The Bible says that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, God sent his son. Christ wasn't born a day late. He wasn't born a day early. He was born on the exact day that he was supposed to be. He died on the exact day he was supposed to die. He rose from the dead on the exact day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven on the exact day he was supposed to ascend into heaven. And he is on the right hand of the Father. And he's coming back on the exact day that God has planned for him. Not the day that you demand him to come back, but the day that he desires and wills to come back. That's when he's coming back. So everything else that God does is on his time. And you'll have people. You will have people who say they're Christians, who will try to convince you that the reason why you have not had your prayer answered yet the way you prayed it is you didn't have enough faith or you didn't call out in faith, or you yet you used, here's my favorite, you use negative language with God, and God won't answer negative language prayers. Who's seen the commercials for the Joel Osteen Cube? It's nuts. Huh? That's yeah, a cube made out of baloney. And the guy says on there, it's all positive. There's nothing negative on there. Who cares? And it's because, I mean, I've studied, I've studied Joel Osteen. I've studied, um, what's her name? Joyce Myers. I've studied them, their tactics, their writings, their beliefs. Let me give you a little course in witchcraft. It's called The Law of Attraction. And there is actually books written on this. 
this became, uh, this issue became a very, it was a worldwide successful book, video, all kinds of uh, uh, byproducts that went along with it. Some people wrote a book called um, The Law of Attraction. They, they tried to stay away from this is witchcraft, but essentially it is. It basically says the universe understands a very simple language. The, not God, the universe. That the universe wants to grant you things. It wants to give you things. It wants to answer uh, things that you want. But you have to be very specific in the language that you use with the universe. And you cannot use negative language with the universe. The universe doesn't understand that. So you must always be positive when you're speaking out to the universe. You must always believe that the universe will give you, give you what it is that you're wanting in your chants, in your spells, in whatever. Now, Aunt Clara from the TV show Bewitched, what was her character all about? Huh? She was crazy, always getting lost. She's right. She was always getting the spells wrong, wasn't she? She would give some chant and all of a sudden a camel would show up in the living room. Oh dear. And then she wouldn't remember how to get rid of it. So they have to hide the camel in the closet or the kitchen or something like that. The truth of it is, that's actually witchcraft. I've read enough books written by witches to know that's how it works. If you don't say the words right, you don't say them with the right focus and the right intention, and you don't say them um, in the proper manner with the with the proper ritual then all kinds of weird things will begin to take place usually when a witch wants to cast a spell there is a whole i mean there's a whole thing they do they draw a circle sometimes they will put a pentagram five-pointed star in that circle Sometimes they will put a cross in that circle or both a cross and a pentagram in that circle and they will get in the circle that is to protect them from these what they call watch towers that they're going to bring in to answer their prayer. The word watch tower, what does that sound like to you? Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Guess where they got it from. Okay. Because these watchtowers are actually dragons. And there's four of them. One at each cardinal direction. North, south, east, and west. As long as the witch casts the proper circle... And she beckons to the dragon. By the way, the dragons also are sleeping. And if you don't wake the dragons up in the correct manner, they could kill you. That's what witches believe. That's what they teach. So with these dragons have to be awakened very carefully, very respectfully. Okay, like some people I know. My roommate in college, Craig, he was one of these that when you woke him up, he jumped right out of bed like that at you. And he was deaf in one ear and he slept on his good ear all the time so he could sleep. He wouldn't hear nothing in the middle of the night. 
So if I'd say, Craig, it's time to get up, he wouldn't hear that. So I went over one time to shake him. I only did it once. Okay? But these dragons can be very, very fierce and evil if they're not awakened in the proper way. Once you have invoked these dragons, these spirits, from the four corners, from the four cardinal directions, once they have been invoked, then you must say a certain ritual in order to close the circle the proper way. Because if you step out of that circle, having not closed it, they can come after you and they can kill you. This is the kind of religion that a lot of people follow. And it's in a lot of different places, in a lot of different forms, in a lot of different ways. Whether it's by chance, in other words, the, the chanting or the um, saying certain prayers over and over and over again. Uh, and this stuff will be promoted on the internet. Say this 20 times and God will give you what you want. God will bless you with what you want. How many of you have seen those things like that? Say this out loud to God 20 times and he will give you what you want. Is that what the Bible says? No. Prayers come out of our heart. Whether you pray out loud or whether you pray privately, silently in your heart, in the spirit, God hears both of them. In fact, I would rather have, and I, and I don't, I go to some churches and I know they they can pray pretty loud and I don't have a problem with that per se. I know the people, they're good people, godly people. It's just the way they were raised. We don't have a lot of people when we have prayer times here at our church, we don't have a lot of people praying out loud, making a big noise. And I'll be honest with you. I would rather have this church on its knees before God praying out of their heart and out of their spirit instead of making some big noise before God as if God only pays attention to the loud prayers and doesn't give a hoot about the silent prayers. Because I believe God does hear you even when you're silent. Even when you can't talk. The day I was electrocuted, God heard everything that my mind said to him, including, I'm not ready to leave my wife and kids. That was the end of that. I wished I'd have said that at the beginning of all that instead of the end of all, but I just didn't know. But that's, that's witchcraft, and witchcraft can come in so many forms. She can sh sneak up in so many ways. And I can tell you this, the, what I call the anti-Bethel church. The Bethel church of Redding, California is loaded with witchcraft. And I mean loaded with it. They are into pagan practices. They go to graves of saints and pray over their grave to draw out the remaining blessing that those people had in their life to draw that blessing out on themselves so they could walk in the blessing of those people that had died. That's called necromancy. That's going after the dead. And trying to receive power from the dead. Do, do you know how Benny Hinn was introduced to the Holy Spirit? Who remembers Catherine Kuhlman? I believe in miracles. Remember her? Benny Hinn, after Catherine Kuhlman died went to her gravesite and was introduced 
by Catherine Kuhlman to the Holy Ghost at Catherine Kuhlman's gravesite. That's how it happened. That's out of his own words. So did he meet the real Holy Spirit at Catherine Kuhlman's gravesite? No, he, that's witchcraft. It's witchcraft. And anybody that follows that is following after Jezebel and her witchcrafts. The abundance of her witchcrafts, which are so many. Um, Galatians chapter 3. Look at there. The very show bewitched. Came right out of the Bible. In fact, something else about that show came out of the Bible too. Anybody, anybody, want, anybody know what it is? The first Aaron, you're talking about? He, he had real bad back problems. And he was, between scenes, he would be laying out, hurting so bad he couldn't hardly stand it. And when it came time to act, he would get up and do his scene and then go lay back down again. And after a couple seasons, he said, I can't do it. So they replaced him with the, other, with, with the gay Darren. Yeah, the homosexual Darren. And the Brady Bunch with the homosexual dad. Yeah, he was... Queer. Anyway, Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Now, why did Paul use that word? Who hath bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the, by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Look at what he's saying here. The works of the law is essentially what witchcraft is. It requires the performance of a ritual. It requires, and I could, I could get into stuff that I know about witchcraft that it would be, it would be inappropriate to say. But there is, it, it, it is an evil and in many ways, a disgusting practice. Disgusting, horrible things are done under the guise of witchcraft in their rituals. Terrible things. Who, oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Paul recognized that someone who had an influence in those churches beguiled them and bewitched them, meaning that he practiced or performed some sort of spell or ritual to close their eyes to the truth. That's what I think he meant. Somebody used witchcraft in that church in order to deceive that church, and it had to do with the works of the law. And he said, did you receive the Spirit by working the law or by the hearing of faith, by hearing the Word of God? The answer is, they received the Spirit by hearing the Word of God and believing it. So Paul is saying, then why would you think that you would receive the Spirit by doing performances of rituals or customs or incantations or enchantments or circumcisions or anything like that. Why would you think that? And he was being dead, dead true about it. Uh, the show Bewitched, used that word. That's where they got the name from. Uh, who was Samantha's mother-in-law? Endora. Where does her name come from? 
the witch of Endor, who Samuel went to when he could not hear from God. He was going to, there was a battle the next day. Samuel wanted to know whether he should go to battle or not. God refused to talk to him by Urim, by Thummim, by vision or by prophet. So Saul ended up breaking his own rule. Samuel's dead already. Saul ends up bringing, breaking his own rule and he goes, tells one of his men, go find me a woman who has uh, the, a familiar spirit. Because I, I need to counsel with her by the familiar spirit to know whether or not I should go into battle the next day. And the woman, he disguised himself, the woman was a witch who lived at Endor. And when he went to see her and she brought up gods out of the earth. And one of them had a mantle over his head and was an old man. Saul perceived that it was, uh, yeah, Saul perceived that it was Samuel, but it was not Samuel. It was a familiar spirit. It was like an antichrist. It was like someone pretending to be Jesus. Or it was like something pretending to be a Bible. But it's not a Bible. Because God's not going to speak to Saul ever again. He's going to let him be killed. And the Bible tells us, so Saul died for going after one who had a familiar spirit and from following that familiar spirit. So we know that the person that she brought up out of the ground was not Samuel the priest. It was a familiar spirit. And they named the character Endora after the witch of Endor. See, Hollywood knew the Bible. And they knew how to incorporate certain themes from the Bible into these TV shows to educate people into witchcraft. And my mom will tell you, these, these reruns would come on, and as soon as I'd get off the bus uh, from coming back from school, first thing I did was come home, turn television on, I'd watch Gillian's Island, Bewitched, all of that stuff. Huh? Not true? Oh, yeah, I'd play the piano first. What I wouldn't do was my homework. That is true. Which God has a sense of humor because now that's pretty much all I do is homework. So anyway, bewitched. Revelation 17, 17. She's the mother of harlots. Church, I want you to listen to me. None of us in here are too old to commit fornication. Okay? It can happen to anybody. In Revelation 17, 1, the Bible, thanks, the Bible says there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And, the and by the way, according to the law, a woman that is in her uncleanness, you know what that is? A woman that is in her period of uncleanness, the Bible says anything that she sits on is unclean and has to be washed, has to be clean. And what is she doing? She sits on many waters. She also, she also sitteth upon seven hills or seven mountains. And all of that is unclean because of her. She's, she's made the world an unclean place. Uh, verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away. Um, and, and I'll tell you. A lot of these. Big name preachers. Carry with them a spirit. Of fornication. 
We had a guy who used to come to this church years ago. And I've never seen anybody play the organ as well as he did. He played one of these big tent revival organs. One of these Hammond B3 organs with a Leslie speaker. If you don't know what that is. But that's a, that's a Mondo big time organ. A lot of black churches will have a Hammond B3 organ and they'll play it while the preacher's preaching to add that little musical accent. You know. And this is what he did. He was a very gifted organist and he got hired by R.W. Schambach. Who would go around holding tent revivals. Supposedly healing people, talking to them about faith, bringing in big money. Him being part of the band, he, he told me, he said, Mike, I'm going to tell you what happens. And he said, I'd go and he said, I'd be sitting up there playing the organ. And he said, it would be nothing for notes to be handed up to the and laid on top of the organ from people in the congregation. And it, usually from women. Who wanted to meet up with him after the deal. Or during the deal. Because at one point, the band would be dismissed. And he told me, he said, sometimes the drummer would go to the bar and drink. And wait for the preaching to be done. And he said, then we'd all come back and do our little thing again. And he said, I got invitations all the time to go to women's hotels room. That, ha that happened a lot. And he's telling me this in front of his wife. And that's Babylon. Uh, verse 3. He carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Full of names of blasphemy. Having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. And decked with gold and precious stones and, and pearls. Having a golden cup in her hand. Full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? And I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and the ten vials. And we know that she's a, a mother of harlots. And actually the woman, Jezebel, in the church at Thyatira was teaching everybody how to commit fornication. Is what she was doing. So we know what spirit she has. She is the spirit of mystery Babylon the Great. Let's go to prayer. Father, we ask you to bless your word today. Bless this service. We thank you for it. We thank you, Lord, on this day for those, Lord, who paid the price, who died. Father, serving their country. For keeping America free. For standing tall for America. Father, my prayer is. That there still are enough good men. In this country. That will be willing to lay down their life. To make this country free. Father, bless your word. Uh, teach us, Father, what we need to know in the days that we're living in. Father, may witchcraft, harlotry, adulteries, fornications have no part in this place. Father, forgive those, Lord, who have already participated in that. Please, God, have mercy on us all, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen.